Alcohol. Some of you were born because of it. It loosens you up and makes things more enjoyable. You can make it anywhere in the world, even if some countries have outlawed it. It is literally one of the oldest inventions humans have ever made. Our survival as a species has depended on alcohol on more than one occasion. Some people can drink so many drinks that they lose consciousness and forget what they do. Yet if you give a dog or cat one drink, they risk death. Why is this? Well, it all goes back to Africa. Back millions of years ago, early primates lived in the jungles of Africa. However, the climate began to change and it threatened the primate population. The jungles, with trees everywhere, began to turn into savannas with sporadic trees and open lands. Early hominid primates ate mostly fruits, but with dwindling trees, fruit was becoming harder to come by. However, rotting fruit becomes a viable option when one is starving. But as you can imagine, this is a very risky thing to do. Let's create a little hypothetical. Let's represent our early hominids by these chimpanzees. They are very close to us genetically as it is anyways, so let's start with a tribe of chimps that has four males, seen here. Like I said before, fruit is becoming scarce, and they're getting desperate. Chimp number one eats rotting fruit, mold and all. Well guess what? The mold kills him. He's dead before he can have any offspring. Chimp number two stays away from the rotting fruit. He doesn't want anything to do with it. It makes the fruit taste terrible, and smells awful and unappetizing. Because he stays away from the rotting fruit, he only gets a limited diet, and his muscles become weaker and he's more lethargic overall. The next chimp takes his chances, but is a little more careful than chimp 1. He is able to stay away from the deadly mold, but still has to eat the rotting fruit to sustain his diet. Well, he survives, but the rotting fruit makes him sick. Because of that, he also becomes weak and loses some energy and muscles need to get away from hungry predators. The fourth chimp also takes some of the rotted fruit, making sure to stay away from the mold, but is totally fine, unlike the third chimp. Why? because he has a mutation in his genetic code that allows him to digest alcohol, a gene that the third chimp does not have, and likely the first and second chimp didn't have either. This makes the fourth chimp strong. He can digest his fruit no problems and get all the nutrients he needs without getting sick. Because chimp two and three were both malnourished, they had trouble finding mates. While chimp two was looking for perfectly clean fruit, chimp four mated. When chimp three was puking his guts out because he can't handle alcohol, chimp four mated. And chimp one died long before he could start mating. Because the other chimps either died or spent much more energy on finding food, they had less time to mate, while chimp four thrived. Chimp four was strong, and he had a lot more free time than the other chimps. This meant that his gene of alcohol digestion was passed on much more successively than any other chimp. This is how evolution works. The successful traits pass on and failed traits die off. Dogs never had this challenge, so their genes were never subjected to this alteration. Dogs came from wolves. Wolves are hunters that eat meat. Wolves had to kill their prey and the pack would eat as much as they could as fast as they could. This ensured that every bit of food they ate was completely fresh, never subjected to any fungi. It is quite possible that some wolves or dogs did have a gene to digest alcohol, but it was never used to ensure its survival, so it just faded away, like a recessant gene getting taken over by a dominant gene. So that is the idea of how we tolerate alcohol, but how do we go from eating rotten fruit as primates to cracking open a cold one with the boys? <laughs> This is actually pretty hard to pinpoint, as alcohol predates history. Our ancestors were getting drunk before they even knew what writing was. The most likely story? It was made entirely by accident. It is possible that some fruit was left outside a little too long. Much like the chimp in the story, food is precious, so they ate it. Seeing that it made them drunk, they repeated the experiment. Another possibility is that with grain farming came excess. Grain could have been made into a type of porridge, but then left out too long. The starches in the grains gave the yeast the food and turned it into a type of beer. Either way, no one really knows how it started, but the earliest known evidence of purposeful alcohol fermentation comes from the Stone Age at around the year 10,000 BCE. But alcohol probably didn't stay around just because it makes people drunk, rather, it kept people safe. The process of making alcohol kept the water safe to drink. Fermented foods and drinks stayed safe longer, and probiotics in fermented foods have been shown to help digestion. Alcohol has been a common drink for so long because it keeps away bad bacteria. Water in the wild can have a multitude of bad bacteria that can give you problems like dysentery. Alcohol is so much more safe than water that wine became analogous with Jesus Christ. Not only did he turn water into wine, but at the Last Supper he instructed his disciples to drink the wine saying that it is his blood. And now every Sunday, Christians drink wine to celebrate Jesus. But Jesus is quite modern, as he is still worshipped today. Before him came many more gods that supposedly helped people make alcohol. Here is a list of gods that were directly related to alcohol. These are just some gods, and there are others. This video could be 20 minutes longer if I just listed out all the gods who have a secondary relationship to alcohol. The fact is that early humans had no idea what was going on to make alcohol. They simply left out a sugary drink for a while and it turned into alcohol. They assumed it must be the work of gods. Germ theory wasn't even close to being thought of yet. 
What's funny about all this is that it's a shared idea among the world. When I say shared, however, I don't mean that this idea was passed along trade routes. Europeans did not hear about it from the Far East and try to trade for it. In fact, every culture had its own alcoholic drink. Without any prior knowledge of chemistry or biology, ancient humans all around the world were able to independently discover that a liquid sugar mixture at just the right saturation under certain temperature requirements were the necessary diets for fungi that were floating all around the air all around them. Even in Australia and North and South America, where information could not be passed along until the late 1600s, alcohol was created, revered, and drank. Some may argue that Native Americans do not have the capacity to tolerate alcohol because they have much higher rates of alcoholism than Europeans. People think that Native Americans didn't drink alcohol until European colonialism, and because of this recent introduction, they can't handle it. But this is not true. Native American tribes made alcohol, but they were a little bit more slow to emerge into cities. Pre-Columbian cities do exist in North America, but in small quantity. Because of this reason, with less pollutants, water from rivers can be much cleaner, so there might not have been much of a need for alcohol to be made. Thus, laws about its use were not entirely established. Public drunkenness was not quite a problem since their alcohol was more like a weak beer today. They didn't have knowledge of distillation or many ingredients that made alcohol stronger. The apple may be thought of as American, but its origins are from the Middle East, so cider was not an option for them, nor grapes for wine. They did make alcohol, it just wasn't very strong. Alcoholism rates today in Native Americans can be attributed to sociological issues. Native Americans were stripped of their culture and were often taken advantage of. Native American children were sometimes taken from families and forced into boarding schools. They were sometimes abused physically and emotionally. After all, most people consider them savages or subhuman. Today, Native American poverty is one of the highest for any race of people in the U.S. In the year 2000, the national average of poverty was about 9.2% of people with families. Here in Arizona, the Navajo Nation, which holds the largest area of land for an Indian reservation, had a poverty rate of 46.5. Almost half of all people in the Navajo Nation were below the poverty line. Reasons like this are exactly why Native Americans have an alcohol problem. In many other studies, there is a very clear link between poverty and alcoholism. It is entirely a myth that Native Americans are predisposed to alcoholism because there is clear evidence that they made alcohol before European colonialization. To see more on why people who are stressed turn to alcohol and drugs as a coping mechanism, check out In A Nutshell's video on addiction. The link will be in the description. In Australia, a similar situation had occurred. The native aboriginals were treated much the same as Native Americans. However, until the 1960s, there was a prohibition strictly to the native Australian population. But home brewing was quite commonplace. As we know from American history, prohibition only creates crime and speakeasies. The native Australians would actually sometimes homebrew their own alcohol from Vegemite. Vegemite is salted and heated, so there's nothing alive, yet some people were actually calling for Vegemite to be banned in indigenous communities. Poverty rates in aboriginals are statistically significantly higher than in the overall population. Canada had similar laws to the US and Australia for their First Nations people. Children were often stripped from families to go to boarding schools. These environments were tough and they then became products of their environments. At the same time, First Nations people were banned from buying alcohol, and even from stepping foot in bars. Again, this just creates criminals as First Nations people would often buy black market alcohol or homebrew themselves. Statistics show that Canadian Aboriginal children are twice as likely to grow up in poverty than non-native Canadians. It is evident, however, that not every single person processes alcohol the same. As we know, alcohol can be addictive to some people. Today, alcohol abuse is more prevalent with advertisements everywhere telling people to drink. And although it has been shown that there is a link between alcoholism and family, it is not entirely sure if it is genetic or environmental. After all, seeing your parents drink a lot may make you want to drink. Or maybe it just is a genetic drive to drink in excess. A likely possibility is both, however. In the end, alcohol has been with us since before we were even humans. Alcohol is going to stay with us forever, even if everyone were to stop brewing altogether. Yeast is found on every continent and will continue to thrive everywhere we go. It is even possible for some yeast to survive space. And although some people may have a problem with alcohol, it is still important to remember the history of our people and how we got here. That history always includes alcohol, from the dawn of man to modern day. Thanks for watching. Do you have any questions that you'd like me to talk about? Tell me in the comments and hopefully I can answer them in a future video. Until then, check out my other video I made on the history of cider in America. I'll try to make more videos from now on, but sometimes making the right video isn't easy, especially when it's just me, as I'm still learning how to do this. Please subscribe to see any new videos I'll hopefully be making soon. Thank you.